I always look so short and neat. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Just readjusting <laughs> my chair as we went live. Hello, good evening. Hope you're all enjoying the lovely weather. Um, I am really excited to be in the group live with you tonight with the amazing Ruth Kudzi. Hi, Ruth. How are you? I'm really good. I'm loving the weather. And it's summer solstice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like the hot weather. It makes such a difference to everything. Um, yeah but sometimes it gets a bit hot and I quite like the rain. So for those of you who are joining live and who are here, hello. Um, it takes a little while I know for people to find us because it's streaming. So people kind of come in, coming in to find us. If you are watching on replay, then just type in replay. And if you are here live, then it'd be lovely for you to just say hello and pop a hello or a wave and just let us know you're here. Um, so I just wanted to welcome you all to tonight's Facebook Live with Ruth. Ruth is the CEO of Optimus Coach Academy. Ruth's a speaker, a best-selling author. She has a podcast and she's an ICF Master Certified Coach. So that is a lot of accolades, Ruth. That is amazing. I also love that when we posted this earlier in the Facebook group, um, somebody said and made a comment saying Ruth is the real deal. So um, I think that's... Um, a lovely thing for somebody to say and I think that you are and that's why I'm really excited to have you guys partnering with Flexible Working People um, as one of our partners um, because I think in the group we know that people are always looking for retraining opportunities, ways to transition out of their career, develop in their career and coaching's always been a really big area for us mm. so and I think navigating it is also really tricky. And that's partly what we're going to cover tonight, isn't it? Because yeah. it's not just becoming a coach. It's like, how do you navigate it? How do you think about who you're going to train with and what they offer and what the value is? And, you know, so tonight, if you're joining or listening now, we're going to talk about all about what it means to become a coach, but also how you navigate the world of, you know, coaching and, and what it means. So why don't we start, Ruth, I think, just do a little bit of an intro to you so that people get to know you um, both as a coach and kind of how you got to become and, and do that. And then also a bit about how you came to set up the academy. Yeah. So I, oh, I'll just give you like a whistle stop tour. So I, back when I was like 17, I decided that I really was interested in psychology. Um, so it's nearly 20 years ago now, a bit less than 23 nearly 30 years ago I was gonna say <laughs> oh my gosh I, I still think I am like 35 I'm 45 oh my gosh That's fine. Yeah. it was it was nearly 30 years ago. yeah oh my gosh have I got that right yeah it is nearly 30 years ago how could it be that long so um yeah so I was like okay I really really am interested in human behavior I was really interested in psychology in the end when I went to university I studied psychology and business because I was like I really feel like there's some kind of synergy between psychology and, and business. And I first got introduced to coaching them when I was at uni. So that was back in the late 90s. And then I went into recruitment. And in recruitment, I remember there's another lady called Ruth who used to do psychometrics and everything else and was a psychologist and used to work with our clients. And I was like, I really want to do that. But I, I obviously didn't have the confidence to say and nobody could read my mind. And then I retrained and became a teacher. And I was a business and psychology teacher. So you can see all of these threads. And I also did my master's in psychology and education. So I was getting more and more interested in kind of coaching and development. And then I got selected to be a, um, to be a fast track to become a head teacher. I never got there, but I got a coach. And I remember my first day. So I, I was with this whole group of people. We've been selected to be future head teachers on our first day, and I realized I didn't want to be a head teacher, I wanted to be a coach. So this is about 13, 14 years ago. Um, and I started doing a lot of coach training through that organization. I started coaching people and recognized that this was really what I wanted to do, but didn't really know how I would make it work. Because my, you know, I didn't really know anyone who had a business. Um, so I remember during my first maternity leave, so eight years ago, no, no, nine years ago, I was like, I was really getting into studying. So I was doing my own qualifications. And I was, I thought I'm going to launch myself, I'm going to launch my business. And I had about two clients. And then I went back. And then when I went back, I was like, I can't do this. So eight years ago, I made a decision to start my own business. And originally, I was a coach, I still do coach. 
Um, but what I was finding and what I found actually when I was doing lots of my training is I did a postgrad and that was brilliant, but it's really theoretical. You had to write essays, you had to sit an exam. Um, and it was great, but very research-based, very much about kind of looking at evidence and everything else. And I did other courses and they were very practical, but they didn't have any substance. And I was like, okay, what I want, I want to create something that brings the best of both worlds. So it took me a while. And then in 2019, I launched Optimus Coach Academy, which was at that time called Kidsy Coach Academy. And no. yeah, and then we went into the pandemic. So no. my first cohort was meant to be hybrid online and um, online and offline, but then it became very quickly online. And from there, we've just grown. So over the last three years, we've trained, uh, well, it's nearly four years, we've trained nearly 500 people, well, I think we've got we've hit over 500 either on our courses or enrolled um, as ICF accredited coaches, so International Coaching Federation. So it's we really have created something pretty good in the marketplace, and yeah, I love it. And it, it, yeah, like now when I look back, it's like oh, of course, like I've I've been teaching these things for ages, and I've been studying them for nearly 30 years. I can't yeah. believe I thought it was 20 years, nearly 30 years. And do you still love coaching as much as you love running the business? Like, how do you feel about the two different sides to the business? I love coaching and I love training. I'm not, do you know what? I'm not sure if I love running a business. Like, I do because I love the impact. But definitely, like, my vision long term is that I am not doing the day-to-day -day running of the business. Okay. Um, because I think that, for me, I recognise that my real strength is coaching and training. It's yeah. not looking at finances. or Really interesting, though, because it's so it's so different running a business to actually doing what you're passionate about. But you're helping well, really is. to become coaches. So I think before we dive into kind of the what is it, what it is, I just wanted to ask you, because I know that there's lots of different people out there offering coaching training. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. decided to partner with you because you're ICF accredited and because you're the real deal, as we've said. But I think what we want to talk about just briefly is what are the things that people should think about when they're deciding on, you know, on retraining, on getting a yeah. coaching qualification. OK, so. Right. There are different accreditation bodies. And we like we looked at all of the accreditation bodies, although I knew that the, I, the ICF is the biggest. It's called the gold standard and it's been the most long, the furthest established. And if you ever want to do any work in the US, they only look at ICF. Um, but equally, it's got the, the most robust application process for a provider in that they listen to your recordings of um, student coaching sessions and the feedback that you give so you know that they've actually got a quality control bit there as well which I think is really important so the ICF are, are seen as the gold standard they're seen as the number one in the industry and they're the most widely recognized so they're recognized by most corporates they're recognized by most individuals so they're both most widely known you also have the EMCC which have got a relatively good reputation um, but they are not always as widely recognized. And you also have the Association for Coaching, who I personally think are a great organization, but it is quite UK and Europe centric. So you've got those three. We are Association of Coaching accredited as well. And then you've got what is often used internally, which is ILM. Now, the thing about ILM is it's often assignment based. So we get a lot of people who've done ILM want to come and convert into ICF as well. But those are the only ones that I'd look at. And I see people, so the ICF certify people as master certified coaches. There's about 100 of us in the UK. Me and one of our um, coach train directors are MCCs. But lots of people say, oh, I'm master certified. So being master certified for the ICF means that you've done two and a half thousand hours of coaching. It means that you've done mentoring with an experienced master level coach. It means that you've had two recordings listened to and rated at the standard and other people have done a weekend course and call them master certified. So mm -hmm. look at the credentials of the people doing it. Look at the fact that they're still coaching. So you want trainers that are experienced, but also that are coaching. So ask them about that. Look at their completion rates. So we have over a 90% completion rate, which is unbelievable in the industry. Really? Some have like 30%. 
to ask them about that. Um, look at who they're accredited by. Then look at the course, look at the, um, the amount of contact hours and how much is synchronous, like in person, even if it's online, and how much is asynchronous. Because you're going to have a better learning experience if it is in person and synchronous, because you can ask questions, you can get feedback, ask them about their alumni experience, what happens afterwards, and ask them about their feedback process. Um, and how they're measuring um, student satisfaction. So you want to have an idea of all of those. And then it's about the curriculum. Like, how, what is their curriculum like? What's it drawn on? And then ask them about the destinations for the graduates. So what do people do afterwards? Okay, yeah. brilliant. I, so you can basically are. ask all the questions that I'm about to ask you. I'm busy jotting down. Yeah. Notes <laughs> So let's get into this then, because I feel like we need to get into this. So let's start with, tell us a bit about the training itself. What is the curriculum? What does it look like? How long is it? What's covered? I know you've got two different courses. So can you just give us yeah. a, yes. I'll give you. So we've got two courses. And what we say is everything is, so everything's got its roots in psychology and neuroscience. So that's kind of the lens that we look at things through. Um, and we have a four month course and an eight month course. So the four month course is the associate and the eight months is the professional, both ICF accredited. So lots of positive psychology, lots of neuroscience, different modalities and different lenses that we can look at things through, but all taught within the ICF competency framework. So what we want people to do is to really develop their own style within that framework, which they get mentoring support to do as well, but also to start to understand how coaching is working and to really build on their key coaching skills, which are listening, um, evoking awareness, presence, trust and safety and client growth. So that underpins everything. And then that curriculum is evidence-based, research-focused, which allows people to really have that credibility about what they're doing, but also have the confidence that this is working with their clients' brains. Okay. And so how great. long are the different courses that you run? So the associate is four months and that's three hours a week. So we always have an evening session and a daytime session. Actually, for the associate, it's always a Monday evening, 6 to 9 p.m., or a Tuesday daytime, 10 to 1. And the next one of those, I'll remember to say this, is starts on September the 11th. And then the professional is four hours a week. And that's, um, we always have, so that's actually Monday daytime, 10 to 2. You know, it starts on the 6th, 2nd of October, Wednesday evening, 6 to 10. Or we do a Saturday as well, which is 9 to 1. So we get people to pick the right one for them and that's an eight month course so it's really about obviously it's about finances it's about energy it's about commitment and it's also about what people want the course for which helps them decide on the choice and often we have conversations with people and often I might say to them actually do the associate do the four month um, yeah yeah because it really depends on the individual so tell me then, because we talked about why you would do the course and we talked about yeah. there's different types of reasons why. So whether that's, and you talked to me about some people just want a side hustle, some people want to develop their career. So talk to me a bit about why you might want a coaching qualification. Yeah, so you might want to completely retrain. So in a way, that's what I did. I did my coaching and I started my own coaching business. So that might be what you want to do. You might want to retrain bringing in your past experience as well, but you might be someone like that. So you might be new to coaching or you might have a bit of experience in the field and want to do that. Or you might want to have a side hustle amongst what you do already or add it into an existing business, or you might want to use it in your career because actually coaching as a leadership skill is a really in-demand skill. So we get a lot of people whose organizations pay for them um, to do the qualification, to use it in their role. We, last year, we had one course where people's organization, you know, the, where people were employed, all of the people that were employed had a promotion during their time on the course. But we obviously can't guarantee that. But again, it gives people options. And obviously we're inflexible working people. Often, you know, people are wanting more flexibility. They're wanting more options. They're wanting to future-proof their career. And so they're coming in saying, okay, this is another thing that I could have. Great. Okay. And you talked about deciding which was the right course. And you'll help people to do that when they talk to you about what their objectives are and what they're trying to do. 
Yeah. Okay, and I would good. always, yeah, I'd always say if money is a sticking point, do the shorter, less expensive course first because you can always upgrade. Um, yeah. So okay. So and, with, and with the shorter course, the associate course, at the end of it, you get your accreditation and you are a certified coach. How do you then decide what you're going to be a coach in? Do you go through all sorts of different modules and decide, am I going to be a career coach, a life coach? Or, you know, yeah, what, so, so we, teach, yeah, we teach you coaching as a, um, as a modality. So you could be using that in whatever field you want. And we, we have people doing all sorts of things like leadership coaching, health coaching, well-being coaching, life coaching, exec coaching, team coaching. But what we do actually alongside the course is we have business support. So we have mentoring, we have marketing Q&A and we run a business. Well, I run a business program. So we're doing it again from September once a week that will help you to think about who you want to focus on. And it will probably change during the course as well. So you'll probably develop and evolve where you're coaching lots of different people. So be open to that. But yeah, we support you with that. And by the end of the course, most people have a clear idea about who they're going to work with. And that does keep evolving as you work with more and more people. So I'd love to understand. I mean, this is like a bit of an open question, but in terms of the types of people, what are the, what do most of them come out and do? Is it really varied? What type of coaches do they end up yeah. with? So I'd say at least, right. So I'd say there's probably about, 25% of people who do the course who are using it in their career. So they might get a job as an internal coach. And we've had quite a few people do that who've worked from everything from universities to auto, in the automotive industry to the tech industry. Um, so lots and lots of different fields where people get a role as an internal coach or they're using it in their role. So they might get a promotion, they might be in a leadership position. So that's about 25% of people. Yeah. I think of the other 75%, about 50% of those work with corporates in some way. So they work with organizations from SME level up. So they might be doing a combination of retained work, in-person work, online work um, with organizations. And again, that's from that's with people from kind of new entrants to the organization like the, the new starters all the way up to director and exec board level so working kind of b2b as in working coaching B2B. businesses they're their clients not one-to-one -one with, yeah. with individuals got it and then about the other 50 percent um work more in the b2c market so yeah. they work with individuals but what we're finding is more and more people are actually wanting to do the b2b and the b2c and the reason being Right, let's get really clear here. B2B to, B to B pay more, yeah, yeah, generally. Yeah. I know we see all these like people on, on social media who are online coaches who charge hundreds of thousands of pounds, but generally B2B pay more. Um, and there are lots of opportunities for doing blended work in B2B. So things like workshops, training, and coaching. Um, B2C, you know, it... It, again, it can be harder to get started if you've got a great niche. If you are really good on things like social media, that can be that, yeah, can, really awesome. that can take time to build as well. Yeah. So most people that we're having it now want to have some element of B2B in what they do. And so remember that B could be schools, it could be charities, it could be the NHS. All of those are, are big providers. of, of And I think that's why this is a really interesting conversation, because when I think about coaching, I mean, there's so many coaches in our community and in our world, but so many of them are B2C. Mm. And actually, it is more, it's great, but it's, but to have a combination, and, and we know it's more lucrative to work with companies. And yeah. also, I wasn't aware how many people were training to become, you know, getting the qualification to leverage their own careers. So that's been an interesting learning yeah. for me as well, just in terms of using that skill. So that's really interesting. Okay, so we've talked a bit about um, the coaching in terms of what's covered um, and how long it is. It sounds to me like it's very doable alongside, you know, a, a current job. It's not something you don't have to give up your job to do. You do it alongside. It's only a, it's a small amount of hours a week, three yeah. hours, four hours a week. So it's very doable. It's not like you have to, you know, give up, you know, your job to do it. And you talked about synchronous and asynchronous, or I've said that wrong, but virtual and 
What yeah. is it? Synchronous and what is the it? Synchronous is like it, it's like it's like in the moment and asynchronous mm -hmm. yes. is what's back. And so tell me what you do, how you how that works for you. So ours is ours is in, in person. Like in person. even with like that course that I said, the business course, we're doing it like live on Zoom because if it's live, people show up and engage. And the great thing is that people can watch stuff back from, you know, people can watch things back from when they, uh, from, from recordings. But if people are not live, if people are just watching it back, often they might not watch back or they might not ask the questions or they might not do those things. And therefore it's more difficult for them to often assimilate the information, but also practice because there's a big, 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 element of practice and feedback in both of the courses where we really support people to build their skills as a coach because that is so important and so how much time do they spend building their skills as a coach and so, they need to get coaching clients I see a lot of people coming into the group say mm. I'm training and I need to build up my coaching you know yeah. hours what does that look like so to get the first level of the ICF accreditation, so you can get that with either our associate or a professional diploma, you need to have the training and you need to have 100 coaching hours. So let's have a quick drink. So you need to have 100 coaching hours. So that would be a combination of paid and pro bono or free hours. But during the course as well, in the professional, we have 28 sessions and you coach in, I'd say, 25 of them. During the associate, we have 14 sessions and you'll be coaching in at least eight of them. So there's lots and lots of actual practice on the course and you get feedback in those sessions as well. There's peer feedback, but there's also um, trainer led feedback too. So it's always about, OK, how are you really improving and sharpening your, your tools as a coach? And what are we measuring you against? We share that, obviously, right at the beginning in terms of the competencies and what we're looking for and why we're looking for those two. OK. And you talked earlier about what the alumni experience is and once you've trained, what does that look like and kind of the after support? So you've been mm. through it. And then what, what does that look like with you guys? So, so the alumni experience. So when you've completed the course, you come into our alumni group. So we've got a Facebook group. We did actually try and take that off Facebook onto Kajabi. Oh my gosh, that did not work. So we're still on Facebook. So we've got a Facebook group. Um, and then we also have, so we still have calls every month for that. You can still access all the business stuff. We have um, accreditation calls because when you've got your hours and your certificate, you then apply for accreditation with the ICF. You have to pay $300. You also have to do this online multiple choice test. And so we support you with that with quarterly calls. So we're kind of, mopping people up about when they're just about to take it to make sure they feel good we have a live event every year so we've got our we've got our one on friday at the barbican so there's lots and lots of support we've got a coach directory we get we're having our first um our first book with optimus students so 10 graduates are all writing in this book about the way that they're using coaching with some case studies and some research. So that's coming out in March, March of 5th. Um, so we're going to be doing one of those every year. And that is basically, it's run at cost. So like the publishers get all of the money, they support the clients, and then the students who are selected get 10% of the royalty. So we're very much about how can we support people ongoing because what we want is more people to be coaching more people to be having those skills and yeah. people to be using them because we believe in it yeah absolutely okay so I'd love to for you and we talked about this um to share some examples of some people who have trained and gone through you said you know it's about 500 people now just give us a few examples of some of the people who've been through the training and what they're doing now Okay, so I'm going to give, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about them. Like you can see all the testimonials and stuff on our website as well. So we've got loads on there and on Trustpilot. Yeah. So I'm going to give you an example of somebody who came brand new into coaching. So they were from an engineering background. They joined the coach training. They had never coached before. So by the end of the training, they had already got two corporate contracts. They work predominantly in corporate and as an associate coach, coaching new and emerging yeah. leaders and they work pretty much in the STEM space. So they were brand new and they, I think they paid back their investment during the training. I always say to people, if you're brand new to coaching, there are people that do, 
pay their investment back during the training who are brand new. I'm thinking of somebody else who's just done that as well. But it's less likely that you're going to do it in that time. Yeah. So like, like being really honest, yes, you can. Would I guarantee it? No way. Um, then we have somebody who came in who was coaching, um, but they they weren't qualified. So they were actually doing more mentoring. So they did the training and now they do a variety of things. So they work in-house for a couple of organizations, a couple of design agencies. They do some stuff for a members club. They do some associate training as well for another organization and they have their private practice. They have, I think, five or six different streams, corporate and working with individuals. Um, then we have another person. I don't know if she's in here or not. So she came in already having done a little bit of coaching, but what she wanted to do is build a side hustle. So she works with about 10 clients a month, um, but she still works full time as well. So this is kind of you know a couple of evenings a week. I think occasionally like on a Friday, she sees some coaching clients. And for her, that works really, really well. And she actually recently changed jobs and it really helped her to change jobs, having that coaching expertise and experience as well and get a job that she's really engaged with. And I'll give another example of somebody who came and was um, sponsored by his organization and he did really well on the diploma and then he got a new role and that new role has given him more flexibility around his family. So you can see there's lots of different examples. Different. Yeah. yeah, lots of really different examples there. So that's great. So that really brings to life kind of the different ways that people are using the coaching qualification and how they're, how they're doing it. Mm -hmm. And what would you say makes a good coach? So the, the most important thing, and there's actually some research on this, is that people are curious. People are interested in their own development and learning. And so they take things on board. They have a growth mindset there. They, you know, if they get feedback, of course, you know, if our feedback isn't great, we always kind of, you know, it, we, we don't always love it. They take feedback on and they grow. Growth and development are at the core. So I think that anybody can be a great coach if they make the commitment to grow and develop and they get the right training and support. And yes, there is an argument that some people have got naturally are better than others. But I do think if you've got that motivation, you can be a great coach. Okay, great. So I think one of the questions that I know is on, going to be on people's minds is, this is all great, but how, how much does it cost? How much does it cost? Yes. yes. <laughs> what numbers? Let's talk about the numbers. Okay, so the associate diploma, which is our, our first level, is 3,300 plus fat. And we do payment plans on all of these. And then the professional diploma is 5,750 plus fat. So they are, you know, I'm not going to be saying that like, oh, it's really cheap. And there are lots of courses that are cheaper, but not at this standard. So you need to really think about value and the types of course that you want. Because what I've seen so many times is people do cheaper courses and then realize that it's not recognized. And it hasn't given them the depth. So that's why lots of people like their employers paying for it. Um, but obviously we have payment plans and payment options available too. So that's interesting. So you just talked about companies paying for it. Mm. So there are companies who want to put their people through and give them quali quali coaching qualifications. So that's yeah. really interesting for, for you to go and ask your company if that's something you want to do as part of your training. Yeah. And we've had that from public sector, private sector, um, you know, all different sizes of companies from FTSE 100 and, and banks and, and law firms to much smaller organizations as well. And do you have something that they could use to help them to go into their company and sort of pitch that they want to do it and the benefits of that? Could you yeah, I mean, we have a brochure. I would say that for most of the organizations, the organizations that usually use coaching already, but again, it's something that we can, you know, if there's individual things, you can just drop us a message and we can chat. Okay, perfect. And so let's just talk back on staying on the money for the moment about ROI, because I think that, you know, you make an investment of, say, 3,300 or 5,050. And, you know, you're, in your head, you're going, OK, so what does that look like in terms of my business and how quickly might I be able to make my money back? So what does that I know it's a bit depending on. Yeah, it is. It's dependent on so many things. Yes. But what I would say is if you already have a business then I would expect you to make that ROI within the year of graduating. It may be 
a lot sooner. So most people it's sooner, but I would expect it to be pretty soon. And the average ROI for coach training is three times. But we definitely like, you know, when we've kept in touch with graduates, the majority of them have got a much higher ROI than that. So if you've already got a business, I'd expect it within a year. If you're working in a corporate, again, I'd expect it within a year because we're seeing that with pay rises and promotions. Most people, it's more than that. Um, if you are new to coaching and retraining, I would give yourself two years to get a positive ROI. And I'm just going to talk about, um, and a lot of people, like, you know, lots of people have done it during the training. But again, you know, and you might be listening to this and you're like, oh, well, I can do it quicker. Brilliant. I just, you know, I'm not one for promising things, uh, promising, promising, like um, promising stuff that that you might not find because yeah. there's lots and lots of variables. You know, if you want to be a leadership coach in a professional services firm, you're going to have to get really solid leadership coaching experience if you don't have experience working in that industry, even yeah. though you can feasibly coach them. It really does depend on it. your past experience does play a part as well. So I'm going to share these are these are this is data from the ICF. I think this is from 2022, um, a survey that was done with them by um, Price Waterhouse Coopers. So they found accredited and qualified coaches, 90% of them coach and do something else. So most people have kind of a blended a blended approach where they might coach and train or speak or mentor or strategize or run workshops and various different things. And they found that average income from coaching only, I think was 40 to 80K in Western Europe. So we might think that in the UK, that's probably from about 50K upwards. That's for coaching only. And that is accredited coaches. Now, yeah. I would say if you are, you know, there are, there are anything from 35 to 500k coaches that have gone through our training training are earning there's so many different factors and if you're only working part time you might be earning you know an extra 2k a month um when you're established so remember that this doesn't happen overnight your past experience does play, play a part as well yes there is lots of potential for you know in corporates charging 350 400 500 600 pounds an hour plus but you're not going to be charging that as soon as you come out of a course right, no, of course yeah and there's just so many factors not just the you know corporate yeah. will obviously earn more but how many hours you're working and spending in your business and exactly. you know is it a side hustle is it your main business etc yeah okay so just, like, definitely look at all of those and you know i'm not going to promise that you're going to be a millionaire overnight <laughs> No, but there's lots of coaches <laughs> aim to be, and there are lots of successful coaches. And so mm. you know, there's definitely potential there for it to be a very lucrative business if that's what if that's how you you know you work yeah. hard, you create your niche and you do well. Exactly. Okay. So we we've run a bit over, but I think we've covered a lot. And um I just want to ask you, I suppose if people want to talk to you about the course and a bit more and mm. find out a bit more, we're going to drop some links, but can people contact you directly? We'll put some people links can in. contact me directly. So I'm going to put my email there as well. Um, I'm going to put a couple of links. We've got a workshop week where you can find out a little bit more about what it looks like inside of Optimus. It's completely free and it's running from a week today, actually next Wednesday, at eight o'clock. I think the first one is with me. Um, and then I'll put links to the courses as well. And we've said that if you're from flexible working people, please, can you mention that in emails or when you get onto a call with me or one of the team? And what we're going to do for our next intake, which is September, October, is that we'll offer three additional group calls for just the flexible working people to really help you solidify and develop your skills and give you some extra support. That's fantastic. OK, so the workshop is the week after next. No, so next week. Next, next week. week on Wednesday. Yeah, it starts okay. on Wednesday. So there's four different workshops, all completely free. Um, I'm talking about neuroscience. What the workshops cover? So I'm talking about neuroscience and how coaching works and how we how behavioural change happens and what we can do to change our behaviour. Um, then Hannah, who's one of our trainers, is talking about getting your own needs met, the importance of that, and different practices that we can use personally that will help us as coaches. And then Julia, who's our coach training director, is talking about the drama triangle and communication and how understanding this can help us build relationships and um, and 
develop more effective communication. Amazing. Okay, so we're going to drop all the links into the thread so that people can either join the workshop next week, get in touch with Ruth if you're interested in finding out a bit more about it. Um, and I hope that everybody listening, I know that there's not um, so many people listening live because a lot of people will watch this on replay. I've already had messages saying, will it be available? And yes, it is. So if you are watching this on replay, feel free to drop a note to Ruth directly or in the thread and she will come back to you. Um, I hope you found this really useful. I know that it's kind of taken the lid off a bit because I think mm -hmm. that we talk about coaches and there's so many different types. And I think for me, it's really started to give me a really good understanding of, and I hope everybody listening, the different types of coaching that you can do, how to think about, you know, when you're thinking about coaching, what should you be thinking about and the whole like accreditation and, you know, and, and making the right decision about who you work with and it not just being financially driven in terms of obviously the, the cheapest is always, the, you know, it, it seems like a better option, but often, you know, you need to, you pay for what you get. So it's mm. just about balancing all, all out and looking at what you get. So I know that Ruth is, you know, she's one of our partners now and she's going to be actively in the group and very happy to have any chat with anybody who's interested in looking at this as a career option. So Ruth, thank you so much for joining us. It's been really great getting under the skin of kind of a bit more about you and the coaching and what you do. Um, I know that we're going to do more of these over the next few months. And so we're going to be seeing a lot of you. But if anyone's got any questions, drop Ruth a note. So um, I hope you all enjoyed it. And Ruth, I'll see you in the group soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.